Hey everyone, CC Genesis here. I'm sure I'm helping out my friend Chop his new deck profile. We're gonna split the we're gonna split it up. So you can go check it up on his channel. Which is Gojin the Rage at YouTube. Alright, so here he's gonna show off his Royal Paladin deck profile. So this is a Royal Paladin Brave deck profile. Pretty budget, so like it's a little friendly on the wallet. I mean, except for the G Zone, you know. G Zones always. <laughs> Expensive. It's the extra deck. Yeah, it's an extra deck that gets you. It's how they make money. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, we're going to start with the grade zeros. And the first grade zero you're going to have is the starter, uh, Steus. His ability is that when you're in Brave, which is when you have three or less cards in hand, which is going to be a big point in most of the skills, you can put them into your soul, select one of your units, it gains 5,000 power, and the red text that it returns to your hand at end of the turn. So he's good for like when you call the, either the perfect guard, or maybe when you have to call the stride enabler to search your boss all now. Uh, he, he's, he also helps fixing columns, like if there's columns that aren't that, that, aren't that powerful, you can make them stronger. And that's pretty much what he's used for. He's just a lot of utility. So the next card is you're gonna run for Bringer of Dreams Bellinus. He is your standard put me into soul uh, if your Vanguard has X name for in this case it's Altmile. If your Vanguard has Altmile in its card name your Vanguard gains 5,000 power and you draw a card. And this is before you activate your drive checks, it's when your Vanguard attacks. So, for certain cards in your G zone, it's going to help build up your soul. And for certain cards uh, that's going to come up later in the deck, it's going to help uh, fix those numbers and make those numbers better. Then we have for Sarugal. Sarugal is the Brave Stand trigger. Who, whose effect says, on call, if you're in Brave when he's called, you can, at the end of the turn, you draw one card and return him to deck. As long as he's not retired, the effect is always active, and you don't, and you get, you get an extra card in hand, so. There's other cards that you do this, but for different costs. Then we have Encourage Angel, who is Generation Break 1. On call, you select two of your units and they gain plus 3,000 power, and this unit returns to the deck. So, your trigger, some of your triggers will cycle back into Some of your other triggers will cycle back into the deck. Uh, you'll have more stands to attack more often and more times, so that your opponent has to drop more guard for more attacks. And she helps fix columns as well, you know. We always want to fix columns. There's also a cute there's like a, also a cute loop that you can do. Yeah. Well, not we'll a, explain. a combo. Is it is a very situational combo. Very, very situational combo that I'll explain at the end of the video. Um, then, like every Royal Paladin deck, just four heal triggers. Any heal trigger will do. I prefer Elaine because, you know, you don't have to run heals. Yeah, it's true. You don't have to run heals. You could, you could replace her with crits. You could, damage. Yeah, you can go for more face damage. More crits. All right. Or we, we understand this concept here. Or even more stands if you want. You know, stands are fun. Right. Then we have Headwind Knight Selim. His ability is that he's an extra grade two when he's in deck. Mm -hmm. And if you have an all mile vanguard so and you're in brave, he counts himself in the deck. Yes, in the deck he's counted as a grade two. So when you have a vanguard skill or a rear guard skill that says search your deck for a grade two, if you already have two grade twos in the front row and you want to have and one of them doesn't have a booster, you can call him in the rear guard That's behind him, behind it. So he also has the brave ability that if you have a vanguard with all mile in its card name, he gains three thousand power. So you. He's pretty fun, like. He's so he's, he's, a, he's very useful. He's a 10k booster. Again, column fixing. 10k booster? Yeah. Having to be searched out? Damn, so. Yeah. That's stupid. why we run four of him. That's stupid. So. 
Next is four of the stride enabler. So obviously the stride enabler allows you to stride without having to pitch a grade three or yeah, pitch more than your stride. He searches a stride father. Another yeah, he, he searches your he searches your main boss all around. Um, and now with the new Alma coming out, he can search that too because he specifically searches anything with Altmail and it's card name. So, so it's just he not works for three, it's just only Altmail. Yeah, it, it has to have Altmail and it's card name. So it's more strict stride name. It's a, it's, it has to be a grade, you have to reveal a grade three card in order to use the effect. So, so you only get to search Altmail. You only get to search Altmail. So it's more restricted. So it's a little more restricted. I, I, okay, that's fair. That's fair. Then we have three copies of Olwen, or Hornus, excuse me. Olwen is a jewel knight. <laughs> uh, this guy will make your columns stupidly big. As long as you're in Brave, every time you call something in front of him, you can Soul Blast one, and he gets 3,000 power. He's part of the combo. He's, He's part, part of the, the sweet combo that we're going to explain later. Um, and then he has the added effect that if your Vanguard is grade 4, he gets another 3k. Mm -hmm. So in total, if you have, let's say, strode into Transcending the Heavens, he gets 6,000 power every time you call something in the same column as this unit, as long as you're in Brave. So stupid. It's. I saw this happen yesterday too. So yeah. Oh my God. Then I mean, it's not consistently happening. But yeah, it's, it's not consistent, but it, it, it's stupid when it does go off. It's stupid when it because it goes like off. Amazing. Ninety six thousand power. Something. Yeah. It was ninety one thousand power. It was oh amazing. Uh, this is the first brave perfect guard. I might uh, switch to for the new one that's coming out. Uh, this one is pretty basic. On call, if you're in Brave, it gets 2,000 power. And the red text that at end of turn, you can counter blast one to have it return to your hand. Which also works with the starter. You I mean, that's really good. Yeah. It's it's really good. I mean, I'm a little upset that it's counter blast one. Uh, there are other perfect guards that do the same thing, but for less. That balance somehow. Man. Yeah. But then again, they don't gain 2,000 power, so they're not AK boosters. And so the starter can allow you to gain the red tech skill, but not have to pay the counter blast. Then we have two copies of, of Suleiman. Suleiman is the replacement Twin Sword. Uh, okay, so what happened to Twin Sword? <laughs> what happened to Twin Sword was Twin Sword didn't give power. And Twin Sword needed to be boosted. Okay. Uh, when Suleiman attacks, I believe it's a Vanguard, uh, or I think it's one. It's just on attack. And then it's Counter Blast one, and you discard one card from your hand. You select it when this unit attacks. You select a Grade Two from your deck, and you can call it to any rear guard circle. So you can call it over him. You can call it next. You can call it behind him. Oh, Spectre there. Oh yes, hello Spike Brothers. This is this is Royal Paladin Spike Brothers edition. And then like we have to be a GB one. To do you this. have to be Generation Break one to do this. So like if you G guarded a turn before and like you can't stride, you can still use his skill. Yeah. But he's uh he's one he's a source of of call power. And he has the neat plus three K if your Vanguard's all mile and you're in brave. Mm -hmm. And then the discard also helps put you in Brave, like for other skills, if you really need How do you it. activate Brave? To activate Brave, you need to have three or less cards in it. Okay. So, for example, an auto skill that has Brave would activate during the timing, so you, would mu you so must be in Brave. Only have three cards. Yeah, during the time that you activate the skill if you have three or less cards in hand, the skill activates, okay. and then it doesn't matter if you, go over, go, if you yeah. go over. The only time that it really matters is if it's continuous Continuous Brave. Mm -hmm. okay. Then we have two uh, Knight of Flight Danius. This guy is the other part of the ridiculous combo that we said earlier. 
his first skill is continuous during your turn. He gains 1,000 for each of your brave units. So, so he he makes himself bigger just by having other units with brave. So, and this includes uh, Vanguard. It's a rearguard only skill if your Vanguard has a brave skill and uh, his, it'll trigger his effect. And then his second skill is Counterblast 1. Choose a unit on your board that has Brave. Uh, Danius gains 2,000 power, and the unit that you selected may return to your hand at end of turn. So you don't have to return it to your hand, it can just stay on the board. Like for example, if you had, um, if you had uh, one of the Eagles out, and you didn't want to return it to hand so you can keep its Brave active for the 10k shield, you can keep it on the field, but he still gets the 2,000 power. Then we have two Knight of Fragment. Knight of Fragment is in the deck to help manage your resources because this deck, as you can see, counter blasts a lot so far. So if you have another grade two on the field, he gains 2,000 power. So he's grade, he's he's 11k by himself. So he's automatically a, a, a 5k shield and then and then he has the added skill that on hit you can flip up one of your face down damage and soul charge one from the deck. So he's a card that your opponent is most likely going to want to guard. So it's generally a good idea to pump him up to really big numbers so that your opponent drops more guard so that you can have less resources but, but you end up whittling their hand away and they have less options. Then here we have Shango. He has a similar ability to Knight of Fragment. His ability is if you're in Brave, he gains 2,000 power. And the red text that if you counter blast one, when his attack hits, at the end of turn, you can draw a card. Now, it's worded that at the end of turn, you can draw a card so that it doesn't screw you out of Brave in the middle of your turn. And it's another card that people are going to want to draw because mm -hmm. uh, they're going to want to guard because they don't want you to get a free draw for counter blast one. And and generally, uh, he's also an eleven k, so he's automatically a five thousand shield as well. And then here we have one of the eagles I was talking about. Uh, his it has resist, so it cannot be targeted by your. Your opponent's card effects. So, for example, so it has basically it's an anti-link joker, anti yeah, cowgirl. Card. Yeah, it's like anti. It's basically anti-control. So, like, yeah. like if um, if del uh, uh, deleters can't target. Yeah, deleters can't target it. Uh, Starvaders can't target it. Messiahs can't target it, etc. And when you're in brave, he's a 10k shield. So I mean, it's pretty Rebel pretty, it's pretty good. Either. Huh? Grand Blue can't target it either. Yeah, Grand Blue cannot target it either. Um, really <laughs> neither can Pale Moon. Or I'm, I th I'm thinking of Dark Irregulars. <laughs> uh, Dark Irregulars when uh, I think it's the Shaharit Stride that you choose to. I think it's you choose. Uh, I have no idea about Dark Irregulars. No, honestly. Yeah, I think it's you choose. So I mean, if it's you choose, then I guess it can target it. But your opponent, your it's opponent cannot directly. Yeah cannot directly target it. And that's it for the grade twos. Now, for the grade three lineup, it's actually due to change uh, with the new support coming out. But... Eventually. Uh, yeah, eventually. Uh, in America, in the, no, in the north, it comes out in, in March. But so far, the, the current grade three lineup is for Blue Sky Knight Ultma. He is your boss. He is the guy you want to be on for pretty much the entire game once you get to grade three. If you have to ride into one of your backups, that's okay. But generally, you're in a better situation if you're on alt mile. His He has a continuous generation break two skill, which means if you have two face-up units in the G zone or on the Vanguard circle, your front row units gain 5,000 power. And then he has another skill that's on stride. You counter blast one, choose two cards from your hand, you may choose up to two cards from your hand and call them. This helps with Brave because you 
lessen the number of cards in hand. So maybe you go down to three, maybe you go down to two, you know, uh, so on and so forth. And you can choose up to two of your units and they gain 5,000 power. So if you give 5,000 power to two units in one column, it's a free extra 10k to a column, which makes it ha much harder to guard. Like if it's already 16,000, it makes it much harder to guard. And then, uh, and then it also makes your stride turns much better because most of your strides will give power to your units. So generally it makes your board a lot scarier to guard. Then we have two Model Knight Orhan. Uh, he is your Brave Searcher. It's on ride, counter blast one, soul blast one. You check the top five cards for a unit with the the keyword brave, and you can add it. You reveal it to your opponent, and you add it to your hand. Uh, his continuous GB one skill, like I think, is pretty good defensively. Is all of your front row units with brave gain three thousand power. Now, since it doesn't state that it's specifically on your turn, it's active even on your opponent's turn. So. If you're in Brave and your opponent hasn't strode, they're like let's say they're a, let's say they're on a cross ride. You're a fourteen thousand to their thirteen. Without a boost, they cannot hit you. And so I mean, he's he's okay defensively. And then we have for for a Knight of Light Order, she. She, on, she has a Vanguard and Rearguard skill that is Generation Break 1. When she attacks a Vanguard, if she hits, she can Counter Blast 1 and Superior call a Grade 2 from the deck. So like, for example, if you wanted to, you could call a Selene and you would gain 2,000 power because that's the other part of the effect. So, so she's good, she helps you call. So she can call on top of herself. So like, if you want, if you just wanted to, you can so you could attack with her unboosted and then call over her so you can boost the next unit and that's pretty much it for the main deck which is pretty cheap the, the most expensive card in the main deck is the, the critical trigger Bellinus but he's only like six bucks for now for, yeah for now because the uh, we know the the clone for Chrono Jet went up to uh 18 for the double rare, mm -hmm. which is ridiculous. So, now on to the G-Zone. You're going to be running four G-Guardians, two, two of the original Fighters Collection Holy Dragon Laser Guard Dragon. Its, it's skill is auto when it's placed on Guardian Circle if you have a grade 2 unit. It gains an extra 5,000 shield, so it's a 20k shield when, when you have a grade 2 on the board. And then you can intercept with that grade 2 to make it a 25k shield. Which is why I like I like it more than Androgius, because Androgius is continuous and you have to have and you have to have two grade twos on the field. So you can't intercept or he'll lose the ten thousand shield. And then we run one run dismal for like Control decks like like maybe let's say um, yeah you're you're fighting like, like let's say your opponent strides into V Max and you only have two units on the board you can generation guard the Vanguard with Dismal and select one of your units it cannot be targeted by effects or it cannot be selected for battle until the end of turn so V Max's skill. For Thunderstrike 5 will not go off and you won't take the extra damage if you decided to no the Vanguard. And that's about it for the G Guardians. Then we're gonna run three Clotennis. Uh, he is essentially the new Saint Blow, but his skill is a little more cost heavy. It's once per turn. You must be in Brave when you do this. And it's Counter Blast 1, Soul Blast 1. You flip any G unit in your G zone phase up. Like for example, you could flip up an all, any of the all models, or you can flip up another copy of him, or you could flip up the one copy of Sabrina in the deck. But for every copy of Clotennis face up in the G zone, you can call up to one grade two. 
So let's say you had both of them face up, you could call another column or an entire front row. And then until the end of turn, he gets continuous generation break three. If you have five or more rear guards, he gains 10,000 power in the critic, which is why I say he's like Saint Blow, because Saint Blow has a similar skill. It's if you have two face up in the G zone and two units on the field, he gains a crit and he gains 3,000 for each one of the units face up on the on the field. So I mean he's pretty good at, at applying pressure like mid to late game. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he can force your opponent into dropping a perfect guard. Uh, I know I've done it on many occasions and then I stacked three triggers on a rear guard because I sacked really hard. Uh, and then we have Sabriz. This is a one of in case your opponent is great stuck at two and they can't ride and you have two open counter blasts and a free card despair. You can uh, you just flip them over. You can you can flip them over and stride against your grade two opponent. And mm -hmm. activate all your JB effects and, now. And activate all your generation break effects earlier. Like it's pretty much the only reason why you run it. It's pretty much the only reason people run it. Also to get rid of it from GSS. Yeah. Then we run to Fetus, uh, he's your. Uh, he his skill is pretty awesome. He he chooses a unit in your G zone, flips it face up. It's counter blast free. You choose a G unit in your G zone and flip it face up. So generally, you're going to choose another Fetus, or if your opponent is at grade three and you you already have one face up, or for some reason. Uh, you don't want to flip him, you can flip up Super Uh He gains. What's up, guys? Okay. He gains. He gains the. He lets you call a grade two. And if it has Brave, you get to draw a card. Then he has a GB3 skill that if. When he swings, you can choose two of your units and they gain 5,000 power, so it's free power for one of your columns. And you get to retire one of your opponent's rear guards. So it adds a little control element to Royal Paladins. And then we have four of Aerial Divine Knight Alt Mile. This is generally your first stride. Uh, his skill is. On stride, you flip a you flip a copy of him face up, and if you have two or more G units face up in the G zone, you can superior call the great two and it gains five thousand power. And then he gets the continuous effect that your front row gains three thousand power. So the three thousand power is always active even if you don't have two G units face up. So he he kind of provides a decent buff to your uh, front row. And he he works well with the next card. You know, and before you get ahead, I'm just gonna say, I'm sorry. I'm gonna apologize now if my if the video is gonna be very shaky. I'm sitting next to the camera because it's a very small space that we're in right now. Yeah. So it's gonna be a little bit shaky. I'm sorry. I apologize in advance. Yeah. And then the last card we're gonna run is two transcending the heavens all mile. He's generally your game winner. You can win the game if you play if you play the deck right by second turn stride with him. His skill is counter blast one, it's generation break two, counter blast one. You choose a G unit in your G zone and flip it face up. Generally you're gonna pick uh, an aerial divine knight alt mile. And then he get he gains the ability that when he attacks he he can call a grade two from the deck. And for every face up aerial divine knight alt mile that you have face up in your G zone, your front row gains 2,000 power. So if you have, for example, three, your front row gains 6,000 power. So that's generally how you win the game because by the time you have strode into um, Aerial, their hand is we is generally weakened and then you stride into Transcending the Heavens and he finishes them off with big numbers and multi-attacks. Multi so that's it for the deck. now. The combo that we're talking about is. I have to be right back, so I'm about to get my stuff because I heard I have my stuff. Yeah. Okay. So, 
Um, if you want to turn off the camera, just hit the button behind it. It'll say stop recording. Yeah, okay. So, generally you're going to have alt mile as your vanguard. Uh, we need about eight to nine cards in soul, so let's say we've used all our critical triggers. So we've drawn all our cards. We have the starter in the soul, and then we have grade one and the grade two. So that's about seven. Yeah, it's about seven. And then we soul charged an extra card with Knight of Freck. So this is your Vanguard's soul. Then you have two face up aerial divine knight all mile. And your field looks something like this. You have Ornus, who we talked about earlier. And you have nothing in front of him, and he's just there. And then, let's say you have a Shine Gall, a Selene, and uh, let's say uh, another Ornus behind, or a perfect guard behind the Vanguard. So, we'll have a few cards in the drop zone. Uh, definitely a stride enabler for that we just strode. And for damage, we have we have a Knight of Fragment. Let's say we have another Selene. And we, we're at five damage, let's say. So your hand would look something like this. You would have these units and this unit. Uh, so, well, it's a little difficult to perform if you actually aren't in Brave. Um, so, so we have a G zone here. We strode into transcending the heavens. We used his skill. These are the two we called. We gave power here. The only problem that I just remembered is that this unit is a has a brave the brave skill. So the the play was to call encourage the four encourage angels until uh, we have a Suleiman in hand uh, and you soul blast four so so that he gains 9,000 power Ornus gains 9,000 power because he gains 6,000 from his own skill, since we're on Transcending the Heavens. And he gains 3,000 from the Stand Triggers. And they get shuffled back into the deck. Then... And then we call Suleiman in front of him. Soul Blast one more, he gains another 6,000 power. So... Obviously, nine times four is thirty-six. Plus another six is forty-two. He's gotten forty-two thousand power now. Since we're in Brave, Suleiman is twelve thousand. Uh, we use Transcending the Heavens skill to flip up another Almal, so he gains another six thousand power. So he's eight. Yeah. So he swings eighteen thousand at the Vanguard. Counterblast one. Discard a card, search your deck for any grade 2, really. So, let's say, for example, Knight of Fragment. Then, Knight of Fragment attacks. Uh, Knight of Fragment gets plus 2,000 for Suleiman's skill. For Suleiman's skill, and... And he gains 2,000 from his own skill and 6,000 from all of them. So he's, instead of 13, he's 19. So he swings. Uh, for example, he hits. 
we counter charge one, soul charge one from the deck. Thanks, 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 man. <laughs> then we swing with Transcending the Heavens, whose brave skill, whose skill goes off. We search our deck for a grade two. We search for another Suleiman, and we call him. And then Ornus' skill triggers again. So we triggered twice for Ornus' skill. From, so he gained another 12,000 power on top of his 42, so he's 58. We got uh, 58 extra power. Suleiman gets another 5,000 power from being called by Transcending the Heavens. And he gains 6,000, so he gains 11, so he's 20 plus his own 3. He's 23 by himself. You use Suleiman's skill again, counter blast one, discard one, sacrifice him, and call a Knight of Flight Danius. Well, this is after we drive check, and let's say this is our drive check. Stand triggers, whatever, they don't, nothing stands, heal trigger. Say we can only we give all power to Danius. So he's at 58 plus uh, 15. Uh, or is it 68 plus 15? Do not remember. Uh, I, I remember it being 58, so 58 plus 15 is 73. And then Danius gains plus 2,000 uh, plus 2,000 from transcending uh, for Suleiman's skill. Yes, plus 2,000. So he's 11,000. And then since we have four other brave units, he gains plus another 4,000. So he's 15,000 by himself. And then he gets another 6,000. So he's 21 on top of an Ornus who got buffed by by 70, uh, 73, so he's plus 80k, so excuse me if my math is wrong, but so the 22 plus the 80 is 100 and is 100 and uh, 100k plus, it's 100k plus, so it's everything's irrelevant. Everything else is irrelevant. Your opponent doesn't have a perfect guard, they die. And then you have an extra attack that can draw you a card. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, please leave a like, comment, ask um, what else we can do to improve the channel, what else do you want to see. Hopefully we can make more videos later in the future. Have a nice day.